Hello friend, Daniel here with StockMusicLicensing.com bringing you the best tips and strategies for selling your music on royalty-free libraries. Now, it's no secret that music licensing and the marketplace goes through ups and downs depending on the season. We've just been through summer and still here in Greece is still the summertime anyways, uh, as I am recording this. And really, the sales do fluctuate a lot, especially in the summertime. But what do I do when it comes down to keeping active or proactive when it comes down to uploading more music to different libraries and how different marketplaces respond to this uh, trends of ups and downs depending on the season. Now, what I like to do is that in the summertime or right after summer is over, I try to focus on a lot of seasonal music, thinking about Christmas, Halloween, and this type of tunes and really focusing on different libraries. Different libraries work in different ways and uh, we all experience the ups and downs of music licensing. Now, Audio Jungle has been going through a lot of uh, changes over the last few years and the marketplace has always been <laughs> in a constant um, up and down, if you will, when it comes down to sales. That being said, in Vato Elements, which I am part of, I have seen a very steady uh, sales and income on that side. So I have no complaints when it comes down to, to the Vato elements. However, on my audio jungle uh, profile, sales have really suffered a lot, especially now in the summer. I can see that very clearly. It's just unbelievably uh, bad, horribly bad, to be quite honest. And uh, but this is no comes as a surprise for me, especially on Audio Jungle. Pond Five is a little bit different though. In various libraries, they do change a lot when it comes down to the sales, and depending on the season. Uh, but for me, Audio Jungle has always been uh, the summertime has always been a, a really difficult month when it comes down to the sales. This is a special a year because I believe I've already been a full year with Envato Elements. I'll have to double check on that when I got started in Envato Elements. Um, but uh, this has completely changed the game for me, meaning that the sales on Audio Jungle have really been uh, compensated with the sales on Envato Elements. The ideal thing will be that both will be doing great. That's what we want. We always want that all of our accounts will be doing uh, great. But it's very rarely the case. Usually if one is doing badly, the other one is compensated for the other one. And that's why I'm a true believer in non-exclusivity when it comes down to royalty-free libraries and stock libraries in general. So at this time of the year, what I like to do is to focus more on uh, seasonal music, I'll really compose new tracks, be really proactive. Um, I have a new setup. Well, it's only a few months old, really, by this time. I have upgraded my, my laptop, my sound card or my interface, my, my amp simulators. I've been using the bias effects. Uh, two, which has been a game changer for me. I'm like a kid in a, with a new toy and I've been really experimenting with it, recording a lot of guitar uh, tracks with that and, and I will share more with you uh, about that here in this channel. I've been talking more about uh, guitar content lately. Uh, some of you have been asking about what guitars do I use. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of uh, small vlogs here and there. I share a little bit about that. I might do a little tour uh, of what exactly guitars do I have uh, here with me and that I use to record my, my tracks. So so maybe you can, you know, have a little bit of a sneak peek of, of my sounds because at the end of the day, I'm a guitarist. So I really focus on that. And, uh, and it's been a real, uh, a good summer on one on one hand when it comes down to sales on other libraries like I said my, my main audio jungle profile has completely uh, been a big disappointment this year this summertime uh, but that doesn't stop me I don't get discouraged I move uh, full steam ahead with other libraries anyways like Pond5 and the rest and uh, and if you would like to learn more about this by the way if you're new to this uh, for selling music on royalty free libraries and selling music online you can go and watch my workshop free music licensing workshop link in the description where i teach you how to earn between 500 to a thousand dollars per month by selling your music on royalty free libraries and the end subscription libraries as well which is a game changer most libraries nowadays they are a subscription they have a subscription based model and if you don't know about this what it is is that the client or the customer uh, pays a monthly fee and they are able to download as many music tracks as they can depending on the tiers that they're paying for the subscription. Uh, this has been a game changer and a lot of composers don't agree with this. There's a lot of debates. 
even from library owners who, who happen to be against this model, but yet they're implementing this in their own business, in their own libraries, because they have to adapt. Uh, but this is for another conversation, for another video. I've spoken about uh, <laughs> libraries that have uh, a subscription model uh, multiple times on this channel. Uh, probably I am one of the only YouTube channels that's talking about this and I'm not blowing my own horn here or, or anything like that uh, or, or, or putting myself out there that I am the only one. There's many channels out there that are talking about music licensing, but none of them, at least as far as I am concerned, they're not talking about music libraries like Artlist, uh, Motion Array, Pond5, and the rest who are implementing a subscription model, okay, in place. And um, especially libraries like Artlist, which are a big, big heavy hitters nowadays. Uh, and if you hear anything uh, being said about these libraries, it's usually on forums or Facebook groups about music licensing. It's usually a negative thing, which is like, hey, you know, there's always a negative side to everything when it comes down to music or with new platforms. And, and this is one of them. Uh, but for me, and, and other composers who happen to be involved with uh, subscription libraries, we have only seen our income being, being up, even though we do get very little per download. And, and I'm sharing my experience here on this channel. So that has been a game changer for me and actually has been able to uh, stabilize and give me like a reoccurring income every month because of subscription libraries. So uh, I'm not complaining. Uh, the system is not perfect. Yeah, but subscription is, is, is the way it's going, at least with this type of libraries like Artlist uh, and other libraries that really refuse to join this type of uh, business model, but they have no choice really if they want to stay competitive. And uh, I only invite you to really uh, see the opportunity if it's something that interests you. Again, if you're new to this, go and watch my workshop, link in the description. Uh, all you need to do is enter the email and watch the workshop. It's around 40 minutes and I show you the strategies to implement in order to get to that income level as a beginner in royalty-free libraries or stock libraries. Um, again, thank you so much for all the love and support. I really love you all very much. And as always, rock and roll and here's to your success.